for an effective product, $50,000 a year, 6 million patients, that's a $300 billion potential. And to put that in perspective, if you were only to take 10% of that, you'd have a $30 billion product. Uh, and in 2020, the world's largest pharmaceutical product was Humira at $20 billion. Um, so that would become one of the world's largest products overnight. My next guest is Paul Brennan. He's the CEO of NerveGen PharmaCorp, trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol NGEN and trading in the United States under the symbol NGENF. Paul, welcome. Thanks very much. Paul, can we start with an overview? What is the business of NerveGen Pharma? So NerveGen's a biotech company, and we're developing products in the neuroscience space, predominantly for patients that have nerve injury, either nerve injury as a, res- as a result of sort of a, a trauma, such as a spinal cord injury, or nerve injury as a result of disease, like neurodegenerative diseases, such as multiple sclerosis or Alzheimer's disease. So what is the status of your products then? Are they, are they in trials? Are they in, in an FDA process? Yeah, we're in clinical trials right now. We're in uh, what's called phase one clinical trials, which is in healthy volunteers. Um, so we've gone through FDA review. We're actually conducting the trials in Australia. And um, we're right in the middle of that at the moment. What are the sort of addressable market for this product? It's huge. (laughs) So it's really anytime there's uh, damage to the nervous system. So you think about um, um, all the people that have Alzheimer's disease or multiple sclerosis. Those are the really large markets, but also things such as concussion or spinal cord injury or stroke. So the addressable market is just If you take Alzheimer's as an example, there's 6 million patients in the United States with Alzheimer's. Um, And the most recently approved product, Biogen, had an initial price of about $50,000 a year. Uh, And that's the price you would expect for something that's effective. They had to knock the price in half because they're marginally effective. But for an effective product, $50,000 a year, 6 million patients, that's a $300 billion potential. And to put that in perspective, if you were only to take 10% of that, you'd have a $30 billion product. Uh, and in 2020, the world's largest pharmaceutical product was Humira at $20 billion. Um, so that would become one of the world's largest products overnight. Are there any uh, major pharmaceutical partners in, involved in this? No, we're, this is the great thing about us. We don't have a partner. So partners are, are a good and a bad. Um, when you partner, you have to get up, give up considerable value to your asset. Um, and so you really cut the value of that asset in half or in third when you partner, although you do sometimes get cash in return. Uh, for us, the issue of partnership is when are you going to get the best value in return for a partnership? And that will come once we show, translate our uh, great results that we've seen preclinically into the clinic. And you'll see a huge step in value and desire for pharma companies to partner us or just acquire the company. And I'm assuming that there's a pretty substantial intellectual property component to this whole proposition? Yeah, our lead product's really well covered by IP. We have the most important composition of matter patents, and they go out until the late 30s. So we're, we're well covered. Great. Um, okay, so how did you come about uh, this company? How did you start it? What was the sort of path that led you here? There's, there's two lines to the story. Um, one comes from the scientist, Dr. Jerry Silver. Uh, who is the founder of the technology. Um, And he was really interested in understanding why the nervous system doesn't repair itself. But you know, if you cut your fingers, they'll repair themselves. If you cut a peripheral nerve, it will repair itself. But if you damage your nervous system, the brain or the spinal cord injury, it doesn't repair itself. And so he wanted to know why that was happening. And he focused on spinal cord injury. Um, Because in spinal cord injury, you have a huge scar that forms And they knew that it was the scar that was trapping neurons and stopping new neurons from growing. And so we focused on that scar to understand why the nervous system couldn't repair itself and became quite successful in doing studies in spinal cord injury. So that was Dr. Silver and his focus on spinal cord injury. On the other hand, we had uh, Dr. Harold Punnett, who is a dentist based here in Vancouver in Langley, BC. And unfortunately, his daughter-in-law got into a pretty tragic accident. She was in her late 20s, had three young kids, was on a construction site, fell, and became a paraplegic, which had Harold become distraught. So he started to look for what was out there, what what could be used to help 
his daughter-in-law. There's nothing currently right now approved in the clinic to treat spinal cord injury patients, either when they have their injury or afterwards to help recover. Um, and there's really the stuff in the clinic isn't that inspiring. So he, he started to look at what was preclinical and found the work from Dr. Silver. Now, Harold was part of uh, a venture capital group, or it's not a venture capital group, but an angel investor group, um, pitched the idea of doc taking Dr. Silver's technology into a business. Took him two years to get it out of the university, but eventually they were able to and form NerveGen. And just let me, what's really interesting here is, although Dr. Silver's work was initially focused on spinal cord injury, and Harold's interest was initially focused on spinal cord injury, this technology is not a spinal cord injury technology. It's a technology anytime there's injury to the nervous system. So the potential here is well beyond spinal cord injury. But what was key to this is because Silver was focused on spinal cord and Harold was focused on spinal cord. It allowed us to un discover this technology, get it into a small company before really the broad potential was known. Wow, that's, uh, that's amazing. Um, so you are doing a phase one trial now. And so what is the timeline until this treatment might be widely available? So that's, that's a good question. It's a bit of a how long is a piece of string because it depends on what the results we get in our phase two trials. So the phase one trials will wrap up mid-year and then we'll go to the FDA to start our phase two trials. And we're gonna do our phase two trials in spinal cord injury, multiple sclerosis and Alzheimer's. And depending on the, those will read out the initial results will read out in, in 2023, 2024, depending on the indication. Depending on the results that we get, will will influence how quickly we get to the market. Um, so for instance, in spinal cord injury, um, if we even get half of what we're seeing in the animal models, it'll be a breakthrough. And we'll get to the market really quickly. We'll probably have to do one more study and then we'll be on the market. So you can see ourselves getting results in 2023 doing a confirmatory study that could take anywhere from 12 to 24 months and then being on the market uh, shortly after that. Well, that's quite, uh, quite interesting. Normally, uh, you know, that's sort of a conventional wisdom around the, the street that to get an FDA approval for a product takes a billion dollars in 10 years. So you're clearly kind of abbreviating that process. Are you also doing it more economically? Yeah, yeah, that's a good good question. We are actually. I mean, uh, being a uh, so we're we're quite small as a company. We're uh, eleven employees. Um, we don't have a desire to be three thousand employees, so we're 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 quite uh, conscious about our overhead. Uh, operating in Canada helps in terms of cost containment. Um, we don't have a large uh, infrastructure, so we're putting all the money into the clinical trials. And then when you're doing um, trials and things like spinal cord injury then um, you're, you're not spending that billion dollars because you're, you're studying fewer patients. Um, Alzheimer's, ultimately, um, when you, if we're going to go to a full program, it depends, again, upon the results we have. If we, in the Alzheimer's, if we have marked response in patients, um, then it's going to be fewer patients that we need to study because we'll offer something. And, and getting access to funds won't be difficult. Um, if it's a, if it's, what you see in the bio, in the bio world is um, the products that are being developed have really marginal responses, and so you have to study thousands of patients. What is the current sort of approach to treating spinal cord inju injuries, uh, and does it involve any sort of nerve regeneration? No, currently there's no uh, nothing to repair the nervous system for spinal cord injury, or actually any nervous system injury. There's no approved products that have nervous system repair. So a spinal cord, a uh, patient has a spinal cord injury, um, taken to the hospital, what the doctors try and do is stabilize the patient and repair the broken bones um, by, by you know, surgically stabilize the spinal cord. Um, and then after that, it's really rehab. Um, and um, in some cases, electrostimulation, um, which helps restore some of their um, function. But there's no pharmaceutical therapy right now, and patients aren't really getting over the hump. Electrostims are really promising and interesting therapy where some patients are able to regain some movement, but it's it's really uh, it doesn't. It's patients seem to be getting 
some improvements, but not the amount of improvement they'd like to see. Right. Okay, well, we'll leave it there for now, Paul. That's a fantastic story. Uh, I'm really intrigued with this. So we're going to have you back in due course. And uh, congratulations on your success thus far. And we'll keep an eye on the story and, and uh, have you back in, in a short period of time. Well, thanks very much. And I'd uh, love to come back. You bet. Thank you. Bye for now.